Good evening, good evening, uh, students in uh, 20th century Ireland. Uh, I am happy to uh, connect with you again. And uh, for those of you who are uh, uh, graduating, uh, um, I'm sure that uh, <clears throat> the outcome in this course will be quite uh, uh, satisfactory. Those of you who are undergraduates, uh, uh, if all goes well, God willing, uh, we'll be get we'll be uh, getting together on campus uh, in September. I'll be offering uh, my uh, <clears throat> history of Ireland course at that time. Now, uh, the assignments. Uh, that this lecture uh, covers uh, <clears throat> uh, the assignments uh, or connect, the assignments uh, that connect to this lecture are uh, connected to the uh, dates of April 20th, 22nd today, uh, April 24th. <clears throat> I'm going to be covering the Northern Ireland problem uh, from the in beginning of the 20th century problem, 1920, uh, all the way to uh, through the violence uh, of uh, the post-1968 uh, period to the uh, establishment uh, of peace, a peace that is still holding the Good Friday, uh, based on the Good Friday Agreement of uh, 1998. Now note uh, that you have a detailed uh, two-page outline of Gibney to um, um, produce, um, pages 226 to 236, uh, I also like uh, would like a separate uh, uh, critical uh, uh, summary uh, of uh, uh, my lecture on the Northern Ireland problem. And uh, I would say, I didn't put it on the assignment sheet here, but uh, I would say um, 1.5 page uh, minimum. And then... <clears throat> Uh, produce uh, a, uh, a, th a thoughtful one-page outline of the uh, PowerPoints for the Northern Ireland uh, problem. They're posted. Uh, the first would be the Stormont regime um, from 1920 on into the uh, uh, early 70s and then uh, Northern Ireland uh, uh, from the uh, 1972 uh, elimination of the Northern Ireland Parliament to the uh, Good Friday Agreement uh, of uh, uh, 1998 uh, PowerPoints. Okay, um, let's get into the uh, origins here. Uh, Troubles, uh, violent sectarian conflict, 68 to 98. Uh, Northern Ireland between the overwhelmingly Protestant Unionists, or Loyalists as they're called, uh, who wish to uh, see uh, Northern Ireland, six uh, counties of Northern Ireland, remain part of the United Kingdom. Uh, and uh, then we have the uh, uh, Catholic Nationalists, who are overwhelmingly uh, uh, Catholics. Uh, the significant numbers are Republicans, that is, they want an, uh, an Irish Republic. Uh, so, so they want uh, Northern Ireland to become part of the Republic of Ireland. Uh, I'll be looking also at uh, some of the major players in the conflict uh, uh, as it uh, 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 mushroomed 
over the 68 to 98 period, uh, the uh, British Army, uh, the Royal Ulster Constabulary, the RUC, the, the police force of Northern Ireland, the Ulster Defense Regiment, which was established as a, a local uh, kind of National Guard from 1992 on, uh, Royal Irish Regiment. Uh, these uh, uh, institutions, the Army, uh, the RUC, the Ulster Defense Regiment, uh, were <clears throat> Uh, they would say that their avowed purpose was to play a key peacekeeping role in Northern Ireland, uh, uh, prominently, uh, most prominently between the nationalist uh, Irish Republic in Ireland, uh, uh, the provisional Irish Republic in Ireland, the provost, uh, which viewed the conflict as a guerrilla war for national independence, uh, and the Unionist or Loyalist paramilitary forces which characterize the IRA's aggression uh, as terrorism. Uh, the Northern Ireland problem from 68 to 98 will be characterized by uh, street fighting, uh, sensational bombing, sniper attacks, roadblocks, uh, internment uh, without trial, uh, what we're talking about uh, is essentially a kind of a civil war in Northern Ireland. Uh, uh, it was, in spite of the fact that uh, <clears throat> uh, some textbooks say it's a low-intensity conflict, it was costly in terms of lives lost. Some uh, 3,600 people were killed and more than uh, 30,000 uh, were wounded before a peaceful solution which involved the governments of the United Kingdom uh, and the Irish Republic uh, reached in 1998 a power sharing uh, arrangement uh, in the form of a Northern Ireland Assembly which would meet at Stormont. So that's a quick uh, summary of what we will be discussing uh, as we take up uh, the sequel uh, to the uh, Stormont regime, the sequel to the uh, uh, institution of a separate uh, parliamentary government, uh, subordinate government in Northern Ireland uh, in 1920, uh, and it's... Uh, uh, termination uh, because of the uh, outbreak of uh, significant violence uh, uh, in uh, uh, termination in 1972. Now, what are the deep origins? Deep origins of the Troubles. Uh, they're linked to the history of Ireland as a whole. Uh, stemming from the British uh, uh, incursion uh, on the island, the Anglo-Norman invasion of the late 12th century. Uh, settlers uh, came uh, in the uh, high and uh, late to middle age ages. They were known as Old English. Thereafter, for uh, 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 that uh, Anglo-Irish invasion of the 12th century, uh, England and then Great Britain as a whole would dominate affairs uh, in Ireland. Uh, colonizing uh, British landlords uh, would uh, displace Irish landowners. Uh, and uh, we come into the uh, one of the, the keys to understanding what, what uh, uh, existed in Northern Ireland at the beginning of the 20th century we have the plantations uh, taking place in the early 17th century in Ulster, um, the northernmost of Ireland's four uh, traditional provinces. Uh, Ulster in the late uh, 16th century was a center of rebellion. <clears throat> uh, in the uh, plantation uh, of uh, six of those uh, uh, Ulster uh, counties, uh, people were planted. They were loyal English, 
and Scottish tenants. Uh, British landlords took up land there. Um, the uh, um, so as from, from the early 17th century uh, on, Irish history would unfold with this uh, significant Protestant presence, uh, especially uh, in uh, uh, Ulster and especially in the uh, uh, northeast uh, counties uh, of Ulster. <clears throat> uh, now, as we move uh, through <clears throat> the uh, 17th into the 18th century, uh, Ireland continued to have a Catholic uh, majority uh, that increasingly lost uh, uh, control of land. Uh, and in uh, 1801, the Act of Union went into effect. Uh, it uh, uh, eliminated a separate Irish parliament uh, and put uh, Ireland under the control uh, primarily of the uh, uh, British uh, Parliament, the Imperial Parliament at uh, uh, Westminster. In the course uh, of the 19th century, there would be uh, uh, several different uh, uh, efforts to restore an Irish Parliament uh, uh, under Daniel O'Connell and uh, uh, Charles Stuart Parnell. Um, and uh, that would be constitutional nationalist efforts to eliminate uh, the Act of Union. Uh, there were also periodic attempts by uh, physical force nationalists. The most important would be the Fenians uh, who arose in the uh, uh, 1850s uh, uh, to establish an Irish uh, Republic. Um, the Fenian effort rising in the uh, uh, 1860s did not uh, succeed. Uh, as we move <clears throat> through uh, the late 19th century to the early 20th century, uh, Irish constitutional nationalism had the support of the majority, I would say, of Catholic uh, nationalists uh, in their quest uh, for home rule, subordinate Irish Parliament, um, and uh, that uh, uh, home rule uh, seemed uh, to be on the cusp of uh, realization uh, just before World War I. World War I would change uh, the situation. Uh, the Easter Rising of uh, 1916 saw uh, the uh, Republican Nationalist under the uh, uh, mantle of the uh, uh, Republican uh, political party uh, and the Republican uh, volunteers who would be transformed in the struggle for independence 1919-1921 into the uh, Irish Republican uh, Army. Uh, it is in the uh, <clears throat> um, uh, course uh, of the uh, the uh, struggle for independence, 1919, 1921, uh, that we have the uh, uh, Better Government of Ireland Act. It's the fourth effort to establish a home rule uh, in Ireland, but it's got a new uh, character. <clears throat> Instead of a home rule parliament for all of Ireland, uh, positioned at uh, Dublin, <clears throat> uh, there would be two uh, home rule parliaments. A six county um, uh, parliament uh, at <clears throat> Belfast uh, and a 26 county parliament at Dublin. Uh, and the six counties uh, that constituted uh, Northern Ireland, uh, specifically were Antrim, Down, Armagh, <coughs> and uh, Derry. Uh, all, all four of them had significant Protestant uh, Loyalist majorities. 
Uh, the other two counties, Vermont and Tyrone, had Catholic uh, nationalist majorities. Uh, the rest of Ulster, uh, Donegal, Cavan, and Monaghan had significant Catholic uh, nationalist uh, majorities. <clears throat> uh, and uh, in the Better Government of Ireland Act, those three counties, uh, Donegal, Cavan, and Monaghan, uh, were <clears throat> to be uh, uh, placed under the subordinate parliament of Southern Ireland at uh, Dublin. Um, the uh, um, the Government of Ireland Act of 1920, in fact, did not um, uh, come out the way that uh, Lloyd George expected that it would. Yes, in Northern Ireland, uh, there was established uh, in the uh, elections, parliamentary elections of 1921, uh, a Northern Ireland parliament with a uh, unionist uh, party uh, majority. Uh, the uh, southern part, uh, the 26 counties, they uh, fell under the influence of uh, the Sinn Féin IRA movement, uh, and under the Anglo-Irish Treaty uh, of uh, December of 1921, uh, uh, the uh, Irish Free State was established and it established virtual uh, independence for the 26 counties. Now, uh, we want to focus... Uh, um, uh, it, it should be noted, uh, by the way, that that treaty of uh, 1921 uh, uh, gave a dominion status to the Irish Free State, but it also allowed Northern Ireland the option remaining outside of the Irish Free State, which unsurprisingly it chose to do. Uh, so, let's focus uh, 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 on... Uh, 1922 on. Northern Ireland began functioning as a self-governing region of the United Kingdom. Two-thirds of its population, about one million people, was Protestant and about one-third, roughly 500,000, Catholic. Um, the uh, uh, Northern Ireland was, uh, uh, its uh, capital would be uh, Belfast, um, employment there uh, uh, up to, uh, uh, in the course of the 19th and into the 20th century, uh, drew uh, workers from many parts of Ireland, uh, close, especially those counties close to uh, Ulster, uh, into linen making and shipbuilding and industries. Uh, in uh, those uh, industries, the best jobs had gone to Protestants, but the uh, local economy still provided work for Catholics in lesser uh, positions. Um, from 1922 on, uh, the uh, uh, Ulster Unionist Party, uh, by virtue of the uh, Protestant sheer numerical advantage, uh, controlled uh, the parliament, uh, and local uh, politics, uh, local governments in uh, many parts of Northern Ireland uh, were also uh, controlled by unionists who uh, gerrymandered uh, electoral districts uh, and minimized Catholic representation by restricting the right to vote to ratepayers, uh, tax-paying heads of households and their spouses. Catholic households tended to be larger and more likely to include unemployed adult children. Uh, and then those who paid taxes uh, for more than one residence, most likely again to be Protestants, uh, they were granted an additional vote for each ward in which they held property 
up to six votes. Uh, Catholics argued that they were discriminated against when it came to uh, local government, uh, allocation of public housing, uh, appointments to uh, public service jobs, uh, and uh, government investment in neighborhoods. Uh, moreover, uh, in uh, Northern Ireland, uh, from its inception in 1922, uh, the Catholics uh, would, uh, were more likely to be subjects of police harassment uh, by the, most, uh, the almost exclusively Protestant Ros uh, 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 Royal Ulster uh, Constabulary, uh, the RUC. Uh, although it should be noted, there's a minority of Catholics who are policemen, uh, and uh, they've often found it difficult uh, uh, to gain acceptance in their Catholic uh, communities. Uh, but especially notable for the often cruel uh, harassment uh, was a reserve force uh, of the RUC, the uh, Ulster Special uh, constabulary, they're known uh, colloquially as the B Specials, the B Specials. Now, uh, the divide between Catholics and Protestants in Northern Ireland really didn't have much to do with theological differences, uh, but it's grounded in culture and uh, politics. Um, for example, neither Irish history nor the Irish language was taught in uh, uh, schools in uh, uh, Northern uh, Ireland. It was illegal to fly the flag, uh, the tricolor, the Irish Republic. Uh, and uh, uh, from 1956 to 1974, Sinn Féin, the party of Irish Republicanism, was banned in Northern Ireland. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's fair to say from 1922 uh, until the late 1960s, uh, Catholics, by and large in Northern Ireland, uh, identified as Irish and sought, maybe in the majority up there, incorporation of uh, Northern Ireland into the Irish state. Uh, I would caution you, though, uh, that uh, uh, as uh, educational opportunities uh, improved uh, for Protestants and Catholics in Northern Ireland uh, uh, and other uh, aspects of the uh, uh, welfare state in Northern Ireland, there are a significant number of uh, Catholics who uh, didn't necessarily uh, style themselves republics, republicans and want to separate uh, from, uh, Northern, from uh, the United Kingdom. What they did want, overwhelmingly, was to be treated equally under the law uh, in the North. Um, now, the uh, great bulk of Protestants saw themselves as British, uh, they were fearful they'd lose their culture, their privileged position if Northern Ireland uh, were subsumed by the Republic. Uh, they expressed their partisan solidarity through involvement uh, with, the, uh, with a fraternal organization such as the Orange Order, uh, which had been founded uh, uh, in the 1790s, uh, which found its inspiration uh, in the victory in the uh, uh, late 17th century of King William II, William of Orange, uh, uh, in the struggle uh, uh, with the uh, deposed Catholic predecessor, James II, uh, whose siege of the Protestant community of Londonderry had uh, earlier been broken by William. Uh, battle of the Boyne, the key uh, uh, battle won by the Williamites uh, and uh, uh, 
uh, to this day, uh, Northern Ireland Protestant uh, Unionists uh, celebrate uh, July uh, 12th uh, as the uh, day that uh, uh, Irish uh, Ulster Pro Protestantism uh, secured uh, its liberation uh, from the oppressive forces of the Jacobite uh, Catholic uh, King James II and uh, his uh, uh, deposed successors. Um, now as we move through the uh, 1920s into the 1930s, there are uh, periodic uh, break outbreaks of violence, uh, usually taking more Catholic uh, lives uh, than, uh, than Protestant ones. Uh, that was certainly true uh, of the uh, uh, original period of the Northern Ireland state, 1920, 1921, especially 1922, there were, there were some kind of ethnic cleansing in parts of uh, Belfast uh, of uh, Catholics. Um, 1930s saw some uh, upheaval in the mid-30s, uh, spawned uh, by uh, depression. Uh, when the war broke out, uh, Northern Ireland, of course, was part of the Allied uh, campus uh, as a, a region of uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, the Republic, of course, was uh, neutral. Um, and it should be said that uh, uh, during the war, Northern Ireland uh, flourished, um, and, and there were uh, um, you know, defense industries. Uh, it was stationing of uh, uh, even of American troops there uh, prior to, especially D-Day. Uh, Workers came in from across the border uh, to uh, find jobs in the defense uh, industries, and uh, uh, there were some bombings uh, of the north uh, of Belfast. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, but that being said, when the war ended, uh, the stage was set. Uh, for a uh, continued uh, end to uh, uh, hopes of reunion, an end to uh, parti you know, the partition of Ireland into Northern Ireland uh, and by, of course, 1949 in the southern state, uh, the Irish uh, Republic. Now, there was in uh, 19, from 1956 uh, to 1962, there was the border campaign of the IRA. Uh, it involved some deaths of uh, security forces in the north, not much uh, in the way of death, uh, blowing up of uh, uh, utility, uh, uh, utility poles, uh, uh, border post, but it should be said uh, that uh, the border campaign, uh, which was mounted from the Republic by the IRA, uh, did uh, seem to reveal that there was a little stomach in Northern Ireland amongst the Catholic community for rising up uh, and embracing uh, the IRA. Uh, as uh, liberators. Again, it's an indication uh, of uh, times are changing uh, in the North. Uh, uh, that uh, being said, that being said, as we move into the mid and especially the late 1960s, our island, uh, Northern Ireland, is uh, going to be influenced people of Northern Ireland, the minority, the Catholic minority, 
is going to be uh, influenced by the currents, uh, currents similar to those that uh, were arising throughout the Western world. Uh, in the United States, uh, in, for example, the quest for uh, uh, African American uh, equality uh, on the continent, the late 60s, uh, the, the uh, near, near civil wars that uh, were, were breaking out, uh, uh, the youth revolts. Uh, uh, so, it shouldn't surprise us uh, that uh, in Ireland uh, uh, a considerable amount of activism uh, was, uh, had developed by uh, 1968. Now, it should also be noted that uh, a... Uh, uh, newly elected uh, Prime Minister of Northern Ireland, Terence O'Neill, uh, his uh, Irish Gaelic name notwithstanding, he was Protestant. He was from a, a kind of noble family whose forebears had uh, converted, conformed to the established church. Uh, I met him when he lectured at PC after he stepped down as Prime Minister of Northern Ireland. Uh, and he's, he's a gentleman, but he struck me as a uh, uh, more of a cultured uh, uh, Englishman uh, than an Irishman. Uh, nevertheless, he came as a, in, as a, he tried to build himself as a bridge builder. He reached out to the Catholic uh, nationalist community. Uh, he uh, visited a convent, for example, of mercy nuns. Uh, uh, he wanted to uh, build bridges between the majority and the uh, uh, minority community in Northern Ireland. Uh, uh, he's not a uh, Republican. He doesn't want union with the, uh, uh, with the Irish Republic. Uh, he wanted simply uh, a more peaceable, uh, a more unified uh, Northern Ireland that would continue to be part of the United uh, Kingdom. Uh, and uh, I should note uh, that in the mid-60s, uh, uh, visits were exchanged uh, by uh, the uh, chief executives of Northern Ireland uh, and uh, uh, the Irish uh, Republic uh, with uh, uh, Sean Lamas, the Irish TSOC, head of the Irish uh, Republic, Prime Minister, visiting uh, uh, O'Neill uh, in, uh, in the north uh, and uh, uh, O'Neill coming down to visit uh, Lamas uh, uh, in the uh, um, in the uh, in Dublin in Dublin. Uh, I know at the time for so many of us uh, throughout Ireland and the Irish diaspora, uh, there was thinking, my Lord, this could be a prelude to an end to partition. Uh, and neither was it, neither could it be, neither could it be. Uh, um, the, uh, what uh, uh, increasingly characterized uh, the Northern Island of, uh, of uh, Terence O'Neill and his successors as uh, uh, Prime Ministers of Northern Ireland, uh, Protestant Prime Ministers, was uh, uh, a uh, increasingly uh, aggressive uh, Catholic uh, nationalist uh, uh, effort to link up with the Republic. Uh, the uh, um, Something else, though, I do want to, again, emphasize 
uh, as we look at what uh, was developing in the late 1960s, uh, the Education Act of the, the Northern Ireland Parliament passed into law in 47, increased educational opportunities for all citizens of the province. As a result, the generation of, of well-educated Catholics who came of age in the 60s had new expectations for more equitable treatment. Um, and so when uh, political activism was on the rise in Europe, uh, the events in May, for example, in France, uh, the Prague Spring of uh, 69 civil rights movement that I've already uh, uh, mentioned, making great strides. You had Catholic activists in Northern Ireland, such as uh, John Hume, uh, out of Derry, one time candidate uh, for the priesthood. Uh, he spoke to, uh, at Providence College some years later, and he stayed overnight, uh, indeed, at our home. Uh, a good man, uh, a constitutional nationalist, founder with several other constitutional nationalists of the SDLP, the Social Democrat Labor Party, uh, who wanted uh, to uh, uh, ultimately an end to partition but they wanted that to uh, occur peacefully. And in the meantime, they wanted equity for the Catholic minority in, uh, uh, in Northern Ireland. Uh, there was also the uh, young uh, student at Queen's University from County Tyrone, Bernadette Devlin. Uh, she became the darling of uh, Ireland uh, when she was elected to a parliament, uh, she made her way, uh, uh, she was part of the people's democracy, which was a rather left-wing uh, radical group. Uh, when she did come to the U.S., uh, uh, there was a, a considerable disillusionment amongst uh, more traditional Irish uh, nationalists here. They thought she was uh, too much a person of... Uh, of the left. She, what she did become uh, was in fact a, uh, uh, a radical uh, Irish, really Republican, affiliated uh, uh, in the 19, to the 1970s with uh, uh, militant Republican uh, uh, organizations. In fact, she it's a wonder she survived a, uh, uh, an attack by loyalists. She literally riddled her body with uh, bullets, but she survived and still around. Um, at any rate, um, the late 60s saw the rise of civil rights groups, such as the, the principal one would be the Northern Ireland Civil Rights uh, Association. They held marches in the uh, in the manner uh, of, uh, you know, the marches that MLK Jr. was holding here. Um, uh, those uh, political marches, uh, you know, the theme was uh, uh, we want uh, equity, uh, <clears throat> uh, inequity, and then to inequity in housing and jobs and... Uh, uh, in public employment, uh, uh, in uh, voting. Uh, those marches were increasingly attacked by uh, militant uh, loyalists. Um, and if you had to pick a starting point of the Troubles, uh, I think we could point to uh, a uh, uh, Negro, Northern Ireland, uh, Civil Rights Association uh, march uh, that was uh, 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 directed towards Derry. Uh, the uh, march uh, on October 5th, uh, it was uh, 
organized uh, by NICRA to protect discrimination and gerrymandering because uh, Derry was a gerrymandered city. Catholic majority there was gerrymandered in such a way that the Catholic majority could not govern the city. Um, uh, the march was banned uh, uh, when the uh, Unionists announced they would be staging a counter-demonstration, but Negro decided to carry out the protest uh, anyway. Rioting erupted. Uh, uh, the RUC violently suppressed the march uh, marchers with batons and water cannon. Uh, all of this was filmed, went on television worldwide. Um, then uh, uh, this was a kind of prelude to uh, uh, a rise of significant uh, violence. Uh, that was sparked by uh, a traditional uh, march by loyalists in the, who were members of the Apprentice Boys uh, organization in Londonderry on August 12th, Tuesday, August 12th, 1969. Uh, rioting erupted as the Apprentice Boys organization uh, did their t traditional fling of coins into the Bogside ghetto of uh, the Catholics. Uh, that uh, uh, violence in Londonderry uh, spread uh, two days uh, later. Uh, uh, the uh, two uh, uh, violence erupted in Belfast. Uh, it was rioting both in support uh, of the uh, uh, nationalist in Derry, uh, violence in, in Belfast, but more than anything, uh, it was characterized by a, uh, uh, a vicious... Um, be special uh, attack uh, uh, and an attack by a loyalist uh, on uh, West Belfast communities. Um, uh, so much violence was uh, was uh, poured out uh, uh, on the uh, Catholic uh, Falls Road community, the Grosvenor Road community, uh, that the uh, uh, British uh, government decided to send in uh, reinforcements uh, to the military uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, they uh, set up uh, uh, literally barbed wire uh, uh, barriers uh, and uh, occupied uh, the inflamed areas of West uh, Belfast. Um, the uh, <clears throat> Uh, interestingly enough, my wife and I were in Ireland. I was uh, uh, in 1969 beginning my research, <clears throat> primarily in L Dublin and London on my doctoral dissertation on Eamon de Valera. <clears throat> uh, I said to my wife, let's go north. And we drove north, drove into West Belfast, drove along the uh, Springfield Road, the Grosvenor Road, all along the road, uh, those uh, side, side uh, streets, side lanes uh, that came in from uh, neighboring Protestant uh, uh, neighborhoods, uh, Shankill, for example, uh, they were all barricaded by a local Catholics who'd uh, uh, hijacked bus, buses, uh, buses and trucks uh, uh, as we drove along, uh, fascinating, uh, until we drove until uh, we came upon some young men who stopped us. They had uh, armbands uh, and they and that understated uh, Irish, uh, 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 you know, way. They said, uh, "You can't go any further." Uh, they're throwing rocks out there. Well, they were throwing more than rocks. Uh, but that uh, confrontation uh, on uh, uh, 
well, it lasted, uh, it, 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 it uh, erupted uh, in Belfast in, uh, let's see, on the uh, uh, 14th, uh, intensified on Ladies' Day, the Assumption Feast of uh, August the 15th, and into that weekend. Uh, that uh, uh, violent confrontation escalated uh, and uh, uh, troubles uh, uh, clearly got underway uh, with uh, the upheaval uh, in the uh, uh, in Derry spreading over into upheaval uh, in Belfast and in other parts of, uh, of Northern Ireland. <clears throat> Now, uh, initially, uh, the uh, uh, nationalists uh, in uh, Belfast uh, uh, welcomed the British Army as protectors, as a balance uh, uh, for the Protestant-leaning uh, uh, RUC. In time, however, the army would be viewed uh, by nationalists as another version of the enemy uh, especially after its aggressive efforts to disarm Republican uh, paramilitaries. Uh, and the Irish Republican Ireland uh, Army, which was practically dormant uh, in 1968, uh, revived in the provisional branch of it uh, as defenders of the nationalist cause uh, from its base in Ireland, uh, the IRA uh, uh, supported the uh, Northern Ireland IRA. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, provisional IRA, Republican provost, <coughs> uh, they arose uh, in, in significant numbers, <coughs> drawing many young men and women uh, prepared to use force to bring about unification, uh, they became the champion of Northern Ireland nationalists. Uh, by the way, the official IRA was another branch of the IRA uh, in the North. <clears throat> uh, this was a more Marxist branch. Uh, they would conduct operations in support uh, of uh, Republicans, uh, but they called a ceasefire uh, in 1972, after which uh, the Republicans struggled for, uh, <clears throat> uh, as they would see it, Northern Ireland uh, freedom, uh, was ceded uh, to the Provisionals. <laughs> the uh, uh, Provisionals adopted the tactics of guerrilla warfare uh, financed uh, by members of the Irish uh, uh, diaspora in the United States uh, and at one time supplied with arms and munitions uh, by none other than the government <coughs> of uh, Muammar uh, al-Qaddafi, you know, Irish nationalists. The Irish uh, Republicans were enemies of Britain and uh, uh, and uh, 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 Qaddafi was uh, also in the enemy camp in those days. Uh, Unionist <coughs> loyalists also took up arms, uh, and a number of uh, very vicious uh, loyalist paramilitary organizations arose, the Ulster Volunteer Force, UVF, and the Ulster uh, uh, defense uh, uh, Association, the UDA. Uh, in an attempt to address nationalist uh, grievances, electoral boundaries were redrawn more fa favorably. There were efforts made to rectify, to end discrimination in housing, public employment. The B specials were decommissioned. At the same time, the government of Northern Ireland responded to the growing uh, unrest. 
by increasingly stringent security measures. Uh, and finally, uh, in August of uh, 1971, uh, applying uh, uh, internment, uh, which uh, uh, was uh, uh, available uh, as uh, legally. Um, now, the uh, overwhelming majority of those uh, arrested uh, were nationalists, many, many of whom were not uh, uh, actively involved in any kind of uh, insurgency. Now, as the 1970s progressed, rioting became more, more common in Belfast and Derry bombings of public places by both loyalists and republicans increased. Both sides of the conflict uh, perpetrated violent, deadly atrocities. Uh, the barbed wire laid by British uh, soldiers to separate the uh, sectarian communities uh, evolved into brick and steel peace walls, some of which stood 45 feet high segregating loyalist and republican enclaves. Uh, uh, most famously, there was the uh, peace wall that separated the Irish uh, uh, Falls Road Catholic community uh, uh, and, and the uh, uh, Shankill Protestant community of uh, Belfast. Uh, that wall still exists, <laughs> although interestingly enough, uh, when we uh, did uh, a tour in 1916. My uh, uh, friends of mine uh, went over to Dublin to celebrate uh, uh, the Easter Rising uh, in 2016, I should say. Uh, the proprietor of, uh, of uh, Patty's Pub, Pat Griffin, uh, arranged for a bus ride up to West Belfast. Uh, we were given a tour of uh, the Falls Road and uh, area, and then, and then the uh, the tour guides, the Republican tour guides, they'd go to a uh, a door that opened uh, through the uh, you know uh, Loyalist Peace Wall in Shankill. They'd hand over the <laughs> the the tourists uh, to the uh, uh, loyalist tour guides for a, for a tour of the Shankill Road. So uh, it it was uh, something rather impressive and rather happy. Yeah. Um, but January 30th, 1972, the conflict reached a new level of intensity where British uh, paratroopers fire fired on uh, uh, Catholic civil rights demonstrators in Derry, or Londonderry, by the way. Uh, if you use uh, the word, the title Londonderry, you're a loyalist. If you say Derry, Derry, uh, you're a, a nationalist. Thirteen civil rights demonstrators uh, were killed uh, and injured, uh, uh, one of whom uh, uh, later died. Uh, the incident became known as Bloody Sunday, uh, contributed to a spike in Provo recruitment, uh, would remain uh, controversial for decades, uh, hinging on the question of which uh, side uh, fired first. In 2010, the Saville Report, final pronouncement of a British government inquiry into the event, concluded uh, that none of the victims had posed a threat uh, to the troops uh, and that the shooting had been unjustified. Uh, British uh, Prime Minister David uh, uh, Cameron responded to the report by issuing a landmark apology for the uh, shooting. Now, in all, more than 480 people were killed uh, as a result of the conflict in the North in 1972. That was the deadliest single year. Uh, that t total included more than 100 uh, fatal uh, fatalities of British Army troops as the IRA escalated, uh, escalated its onslaught. On July 21st, 1972, Bloody Friday, nine people were killed, scores injured when some two dozen bombs were 
uh, were set off by the uh, provost in Belfast uh, earlier in March, frustrated with the Northern Ireland's government to failure the calm of uh, the situation, uh, the British government uh, suspended Northern Ireland Parliament and reinstituted direct rule by Westminster. And a, uh, a secretary for Northern Ireland was installed, William White uh, Warhol, uh, uh, the Irish uh, <coughs> Republicans especially, <laughs> uh, regarded him, he was a fair-minded fellow, uh, uh, they gave him the nickname of Willie Whitewash. Uh, uh, <coughs> The uh, uh, so we've got by seventy two, no indigenous subordinate parliament uh, in Northern Ireland. It's the end of the Stormont Parliament. <clears throat> um, what happens uh, in the rest of the seventies into the eighties? <clears throat> Beginning in the uh, mid seventies, the IRA shifted its uh, emphasis in the long war from direct engagements to smaller scale secretive operations, including bombings of cities in Britain. Um, uh, and that, of course, would be labeled as uh, terrorism. Similarly, loyalist groups began setting off bombs in Ireland. In fact, some bombs were even set off in uh, uh, with considerable lo loss of life in uh, Dublin. Um, in the meantime, paramilitary violence in the mid-decade, 74 to 76, uh, uh, unionist, loyalist paramilitaries resulted in the civilian deaths uh, and, and paramilitary uh, violence by the IRA resulted uh, from 1974 to 1976, resulted in civilian deaths of some uh, 370 Catholics and about uh, 88 uh, Protestants. Now, uh, the British government uh, was nevertheless determined to restore peace to the north. The Sunningdale Agreement, uh, named for the English city in which it was negotiated in 1973, uh, led to the creation of a new Northern Ireland Assembly with proportional representation for all parties, including uh, the SDLP, uh, the establishment of a Council of Ireland to provide a role for Ireland, for Ireland, the Irish Republic in the affairs of Northern Ireland. Uh, um, but that uh, Sunningdale uh, uh, agreement uh, uh, Northern Ireland Assembly uh, didn't last. A loyalist scuttled the power-sharing plan with a general strike that brought the province to a halt in May of 1974, uh, eventually forced to return to direct rule, uh, which remained in place for some 25 years. Now, for the uh, remainder of the decade, violence ebbed and flowed, uh, ceasefires lingered and lapsed. There were tit for tat bombings, assassinations continued, including the uh, high profile uh, killing at sea off County Sligo in August of 1979 of Lord uh, Mountbatten, relative of both uh, Queen Elizabeth II uh, and King uh, and Prince Philip. Uh, uh, and uh, in, in the course of the late uh, 70s, uh, there was uh, opened in 1976 a specially designed maze prison. Uh, and uh, with the uh, creation of the maze prison for um, I supposed uh, uh, for the uh, terrorists of the, as they were called, <coughs> uh, of uh, of, uh, of the Catholic community, the provost, uh, and the terrorists of uh, uh, the uh, uh, loyalists, they uh, 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 
there was a shift in the treatment of IRA inmates from that of prisoners of war to that of common criminals. Now, can we turn, can we turn it off for a minute? No. No. Okay, uh, students, I'll be back uh, in, a, in a moment. Uh, Thank you for your patience. Uh, um, I, uh, let's see. I was pointing out with the construction of the maze, uh, we have uh, a shift in the treatment of IRA inmates from prisoners of war to common criminals uh, seeking a uh, return to their special category status uh, the prisoners struck back, staged a blanket protest. They clothed themselves in blankets, refusing to put on prison uniforms. Then in 1978, uh, they escalated their protest to the dirty protest in which inmates smeared the walls of their cells with uh, excrement. Uh, and that duty protest, by the way, uh, also uh, occurred in uh, my prison uh, amongst uh, female prisoners uh, from the uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, provo uh, ranks. Um, the uh, government of recently elected uh, uh, Prime Minister uh, Margaret Thatcher uh, conservative Prime Minister refused to buckle, uh, even in the face of hunger strikes in 1980-91 that led to the deaths of 10 prisoners, including uh, the first one, uh, Bobby Sands, uh, who had won a seat in the British Parliament while he was incarcerated and fasting. Now, Sands' election helped convince Sinn Féin, which was then operating as the political wing of the Provisionals, that the struggle for unification should be pursued uh, on a dual basis, uh, with, uh, as they put it, with the Amalite rifle, but also pursued at the ballot box. In June of 1983, Sinn Féin leader Jerry Adams, who had been uh, an IRA brigade uh, commander uh, in Belfast. Uh, he won a seat in the uh, Westminster Parliament representing West Belfast, although he refused to take it to avoid taking the compulsory oath of loyalty to the British uh, Queen. Um, as we move through the 80s, uh, in October of 1984, an IRA bomb attack on the Conservative Party conference in Brighton, England, took five lives, threatened, uh, actually, uh, Thatcher herself uh, barely missed uh, falling victim to the bomb. Uh, and the interesting thing is, uh, although Thatcher remained steadfast in the face of the attack, uh, it was the uh, Iron Lady, whom her supporters uh, styled her, who in November 1985 uh, joined Irish TSOC, Prime Minister Garrett Fitzgerald, uh, Fine Gael, in signing the Anglo-Irish Agreement. <clears throat> the Anglo-Irish uh, Agreement guaranteed both Britain and Ireland, uh, uh, both, I should say Britain, uh, the UK, and Ireland guaranteed that any change in the status of Northern Ireland would come about only with the consent of the majority of the people of Northern Ireland. But the Accord also established the Intergovernmental Conference 
gave the Irish Republic a consultative role in the political and security affairs of Northern Ireland for the uh, first time. Uh, and the agreement stipulated that power would be devolved uh, back upon a government of Northern Ireland only if unionist and nationalists participated in power sharing. Loyalists were in vehement opposition to the agreement. Uh, Fifteen unionist members of the House of Commons re re resigned and uh, there was a ramping up of violence. In the meantime, IRA uh, bombings in London made headlines uh, and the breach, uh, breach, re reach of the British uh, security forces uh, extended to the uh, killing of three unarmed provosts uh, in Gibraltar in 1988. Now, uh, those two, two men and one woman, Marie Farrell, uh, they were in Gibraltar to, to set up uh, off a bomb. Uh, but uh, when the uh, <clears throat> special uh, forces, uh, British special forces, uh, uh, accosted them, encountered them uh, on, on the streets of uh, Gibraltar, uh, they didn't ask any questions. They simply shot them dead. Um, nevertheless, Negotiations were taking, uh, were behind the scenes, uh, were taking place. Uh, they were involving uh, John Hume especially, and eventually even uh, Sinn Féin would come into the picture. Uh, in 1993, British Prime Minister John Major, conservative, and uh, Irish uh, t -Sack Albert Reynolds issued the so-called Downing Street Declaration, which established a, pr a framework for all-party uh, peace talks. A ceasefire was declared by the Provost in 1994 uh, and joined by the principal loyalist paramilitary groups, uh, be, but it fell apart. Um, in 1996 because Sinn Féin, uh, which had replaced the more moderate SDLP, Social Democratic Labour Party, John Hume's party, as the leading uh, nationalist party, had been excluded, excluded from peace talks uh, uh, because of uh, the IRA's continuing bombing campaign. Nevertheless, uh, the Unionists were at the table. They were prepared to consider a solution uh, <clears throat> uh, that it included the participation of the Republic of Ireland uh, and the IRA, <clears throat> recognizing that there was a, a great hunger even in the uh, in the uh, Catholic community uh, for peace. <clears throat> uh, they resumed uh, their ceasefire in 1997. <clears throat> Sinn Féin was welcomed uh, uh, back uh, into the talks, which now included the British and Irish governments, the Social Democratic uh, Labour Party, the, the uh, Constitutional Nationalist, mainly Catholic Party, the Alliance Party, which was made up of Catholics and Protestants, uh, uh, very much committed to ending the violence, <clears throat> the Ulster Unionist Party, and the Ulster Democratic Party, uh, among others. Uh, although not the party led by uh, the uh, ogre in the eyes of uh, Catholic nationalists, uh, the minister of the Free Presbyterian Churches uh, that he founded, who had <clears throat> uh, preached uh, against uh, a Catholic uh, uh, equality uh, and, and, and whose activities had been a factor uh, in the outbreak of violence in the uh, uh, 1960s, 
um, uh, uh, Paisley's DUP, Democratic Unionist Party, uh, uh, protested the inclusion of Sinn Féin. But nevertheless, there's a sizable representation uh, of most of the principal sides in the uh, Northern uh, Irish uh, situation. <clears throat> the talks were mediated by the former uh, U.S. Senator from the state of Maine, uh, George Mitchell, who was Irish, by the way, on his father's side and Lebanese <laughs> on his uh, mother's side. Uh, that uh, mediation was a factor in the uh, uh, Good Friday Agreement, uh, the Belfast Agreement, reached on Good Friday, April 10, 1998. That landmark accord provided for the creation of a power-sharing Northern Ireland Assembly uh, it uh, uh, established an institutional arrangement for cross-border uh, cooperation uh, be, uh, between uh, the governments of Ireland and Northern Ireland on a range of issues and laid the groundwork for continuing uh, consultation between the British and Irish governments. May 22nd, 1998, uh, Ireland and Northern Ireland held uh, a joint a referendum on the agreement approved by 94% of those who voted in the Republic and 71% of those voting in Northern Ireland. Catholic approval uh, of the agreement uh, was 96% in Northern Ireland. Uh, Protestant assent uh, was significant, 52%. Uh, uh, nevertheless, there were uh, splinter groups on both sides, uh, and it was an Irish splinter group, the real Irish Republican Army, which had broken away uh, from uh, uh, the provost and uh, uh, and uh, in-law. Well, they uh, most dramatically violated the spirit uh, of the agreement with a bombing in Omar uh, in August that took uh, 29 lives. <laughs> Nevertheless, elections for the new assembly were held in June uh, of uh, 1998. Uh, but the IRA's failure to decommission uh, delayed the formation of the power-sharing Northern Ireland Executive until December of 1999 when the IRA promised to fulfill its uh, obligation to disarm. Uh, that uh, month, by the way, the Republic of Ireland modified its constitution, re removing from it uh, the territorial claim to the whole of Ireland uh, and the United Kingdom uh, yielded direct rule of Northern Ireland. Obstensibly, the troubles come to an end, uh, but though Northern Ireland began its most tranquil era in a generation, the peace was fragile. Sectarian antagonism persisted. Uh, the process of decommissioning was slow on both sides. Uh, the rolling out of the new institutions was fitful, uh, resulting in suspensions of uh, devolution and reimposition of direct rule. Uh, nevertheless, in uh, July of 2005, the IRA announced it had ordered uh, all of its units to dump arms, uh, and the IRA said it would pursue its goal only through peaceful means would work with international inspectors, inspectors to verifiably put its arms beyond use. Uh, in September 2005, spokesman for the Independent International Commission on Decommissioning stated, we are satisfied that the arms decommissioned represent the totality of the IRA's arsenal decommissioning 
by unionist paramilitaries and other Republican groups followed. Uh, in March uh, of uh, uh, 2007, an agreement to form a power-sharing government was reached by Jerry Adams and lo and behold, Ian Paisley, uh, respectively the leaders of uh, the most, uh, uh, the largest uh, uh, nationalist uh, party, Sinn Féin, and the largest loyalist unionist party, the uh, Democratic Union Party of Paisley's. Uh, the two parties had won the most seats in the election for the assembly that month, uh, March of uh, 2007. May 8th, direct rule was rescinded as Paisley was sworn in as First Minister and Sinn Féin's uh, Martin McGuinness, a one-time uh, IRA commander in Derry, became uh, Deputy First Minister. Now, since then, uh, by the way, uh, Paisley and uh, McGinnis struck up something of a respect for each other, even a friendship, uh, uh, and the, uh, they were called, among other uh, <clears throat> names, the Chuckle, the Chuckle Brothers. Uh, now, what has happened since? <clears throat> well, for <clears throat> some time, the uh, assembly uh, was <clears throat> in suspension, <clears throat> and it uh, uh, happened uh, out of uh, the, cre the, the breaking of a uh, bridge uh, between Sinn Féin and DUP uh, on such matters uh, as, interestingly enough, uh, uh, the teaching of the Irish uh, language, uh, which Sinn Féin uh, went furthered, uh, and on the uh, question of uh, uh, same-sex marriage, which had been uh, approved, interestingly enough, in, the, uh, in 2015 in a referendum in the Republic, but the DUP, which was essentially a very evangelical uh, Protestant party <clears throat> refused to accept the uh, um, uh, the the uh, institution of same-sex marriage in uh, the North. Uh, and interestingly enough, <clears throat> uh, the DUP uh, uh, was also uh, uh, more formally uh, pro-life against abortion than the uh, than Sinn Féin. Um, the assembly then was in, has been in suspicion. Uh, I think <clears throat> that will uh, come sooner rather than later. One other point uh, you should, uh, one other development you should uh, uh, keep an eye on, <clears throat> Brexit of course, uh, which has been formally <clears throat> enacted by the British Parliament, the withdrawal uh, of the United Kingdom from uh, the European Union, European uh, Union, that uh, uh, was a problem for the Republic. The Republic remains within the Union, and the uh, question that has to be uh, uh, resolved is, uh, what kind of a border would there be between Northern Ireland as part of uh, uh, the uh, uh, the Brexit uh, uh, UK uh, and the Irish Republic as part of the European uh, Union? Uh, again, uh, some developments in the North. Uh, I have my own personal opinions on. Uh, uh, and in the Republic as well. But I think it, it speaks well uh, for the people of Northern Ireland and the people of Ireland that a bloody insurgency, a bloody civil war uh, was 
brought a, a, to an end by negotiations. Uh, and I attribute that uh, to the fact that uh, uh, on both sides there was a sizable part of the community that took uh, uh, their Christian faith uh, seriously. Uh, uh, not just Catholics, but uh, Protestants. Uh, um, so only time will tell. Okay, that's uh, my say. Uh, on the Northern Ireland uh, Troubles. Um, let's uh, just end with a look at the coming uh, assignments. Um, yeah, yeah, we've uh, um, we've got uh, for April 27th April 29th, uh, May 1st, week 16, uh, I'll be covering, as uh, best I can, uh, the period from uh, 1966 uh, to 2008 <clears throat> uh, and after, uh, and uh, uh, you'll provide a detailed, a detailed uh, outline of Gibney and a detailed Summary one point. What what shall we say here? Uh, one point five uh, critical summary of my lecture on uh, Ireland. Uh, um, something else, um, which I did note uh, in the uh, Harrison book uh, in my email to you. Uh, of, uh, of uh, April 9th, uh, I did uh, indicate uh, that the Harrison book, Ireland Since 1939, will be the basis uh, for a final writing assignment that will serve as the equivalent of a final exam. Uh, I'll spell out that assignment uh, early next week. Um, you should be able to get the Patterson book um, uh, in that email I uh, uh, gave you the link that will bring, uh, bring it up to you, uh, archives. Uh, I think you have to register with them. Uh, the book can only be borrowed for 14, uh, 14 days. And in my assignment, I'll have uh, the particular pages. Uh, I'll try to get that assignment to you uh, um, in, uh, uh, by, by Monday next, by Monday next, okay? Um, okay, now... Uh, if you, uh, w very quickly, I want to look at the uh, PowerPoints, uh, Northern Ireland, the Stormont regime. Uh, whilst the volunteer force has shown, the uh, uh, Asquith government, better government of Ireland, De Valera, Lloyd George, um, Northern Ireland Boundary Commission, should be aware of what the Boundary Commission was. The uh, Unionist Party uh, head uh, was uh, um, um, he was the uh, <clears throat> the first uh, uh, James Craig, the first uh, Prime Minister of Northern Ireland. Uh, uh, depression in Northern Ireland, the thirties. Uh, on both sides of the divide amongst the poor. Um, and Terence O'Neill, Sean Lamas, great meeting, the mid-60s, Civil Rights uh, Association march, uh, poster, uh, Brentullet Bridge uh, incident, uh, where marches from Belfast to Derry were set upon uh, by... Uh, uh, loyalist uh, thugs, 
uh, and the uh, RUC stood idly by. Northern Ireland uh, riots, which I spoke about August of 1969, uh, general election, 1969, um, the, uh, there's a picture uh, uh, of the Wilson, the Labour Party Prime Minister, uh, here's uh, Martin McGuinness. Uh, he's the uh, head of the IRA in Derry. Derry. Uh, John Hume, Jerry Fitt, uh, key organizers of the SDLP. Uh, <clears throat> Lady and Lord Faulkner of Downpatrick. Uh, he's the Irish, uh, the Northern Irish Prime Minister, uh, who imposed the. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, a tournament without trial in uh, 1971. Uh, he's uh, going to be in, involved in power sharing. He's going to die, however, in a horse uh, riding accident. Uh, Bloody Sunday, uh, January 1972. Uh, the Conservative government, uh, Edward Heath, uh, terminates the Northern Irish Parliament. Here's the director ruler, William Whitelaw, or William Whitelaw, Wash, is the Belfast bombings, uh, Bloody Friday, uh, Operation Motorman. I didn't mention that. That's when the uh, uh, British sent in all sorts of armored uh, chariots to put an end to the no-go areas in Derry and uh, uh, in particular. Uh, let's see. Is that the end of it? Yes, I think so. Uh, let's uh, go. Yeah. Um, let's uh, go to the other uh, uh, PowerPoint. The other PowerPoint. Uh, Let's see, that one, yeah. Okay, if you can bring that up. William Whitelaw at the beginning, yep. Yeah. Uh, direct ruler. Um, uh, Brian Faulkner, head of the power sharing government. Also Defense Association, these uh, vicious uh, loyalist paramilitaries in the bloodiest period, 1979, the funeral of uh, Uncle Dickie, uh, Mountbatten, remember he was the one who uh, negotiated the uh, independence of India uh, from the empire after World War II. Um, hunger strikers, there they are. Uh, there's the Anglo-Irish uh, uh, government, Garrett Fitzgerald for the Republic, uh, Michael Thatcher for the uh, UK, 1985. Jerry Adams, uh, the uh, loyalist would say the gunman uh, of the IRA, Belfast, head of uh, the provisional of Sinn Féin, uh, uh, increasingly putting uh, his trust in the ballot box rather than the Amalite. Uh, uh, Tony Blair uh, is uh, uh, the uh, uh, UK Prime Minister uh, who will be a key figure in the uh, 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 implementation of the Good Friday uh, Agreement. Uh, uh, here's, uh, uh, who's there, that's uh, John Hume, um, that's uh, uh, George Mitchell, I believe, and, uh, and Jerry, uh, Jerry Adams, uh, uh, a glow at the uh, conclusion of the uh, Good Friday Agreement. Uh, uh, 
Seamus Mellon and David uh, Trimble, he was uh, a key figure in SDLP. Uh, David Trimble uh, would be the head of the Unionist Party that had uh, uh, been party to the uh, uh, Good Friday Agreement. Uh, Nobel Peace Prize was shared uh, by um, um, by David uh, Trimble uh, and uh, John Hume, two good guys. Uh, SDLP, Mark Durkin, uh, Jerry Adams, Ian Paisley meeting. Look at... Look at the smile on their faces. I mean, would you believe it? Especially the smile on, uh, on Paisley face. Uh, okay, and uh, Martin McGinnis. Uh, he dies uh, uh, in the midst of the recent uh, uh, shutdown. Uh, a good man, a good man. Uh, and I think that is the end. So go through the uh, uh, the uh, PowerPoints and uh, and uh, you know my my lecture and uh, the uh, uh, the the Gibney uh, pages, and we'll be in touch. We'll be in touch no later than uh, the beginning uh, of. Uh, uh, of a week next, the final week. God bless. Please take care, and uh, 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 I'm sure that, uh, uh, in the words of uh, Julian of Norwich, all will be well. God bless.